As a brand new era of animation dawns, Cartoon Network stands front and center by having the largest lineup of new animated series amongst the competition. Some series have created bigger fanfare than others, but the sheer amount of new content ensures that the network will stay afloat for a long time to come. This generation has started remarkably for the network, thanks in no small part to the likes of OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes, Apple and Onion, and Craig of the Creek being resounding successes with their audiences. By the looks of it, the momentum is still continuing. The next show from this new blood of animated series to keep the momentum going is Summer Camp Island by Julia Pott. The show also continues two recurring trends with Cartoon Network. To it, this show is another to be helmed by a former staff member of a prior show on the network, the show in question being Adventure Time, what else would it be? And a second Cartoon Network show to be helmed solely by a female cartoonist, the first being Rebecca Sugar with Steven Universe. What's interesting to note about Julia Pott is that she has a more elaborate background in animation than Rebecca Sugar does. Long before her work on Adventure Time, Julia had already jump-started her career in animation, having created a gallery of animated short films. Two of these films, Belly and The Event, bear mentioning for the sake of this video. The former is centered on a young elephant boy who must rescue his jerkish older brother from being eaten by a whale, and the latter focuses on a pair of anthropomorphic hedgehogs in a struggle to survive their dire circumstances. Belly was created during Julia's time studying at London's Royal College of Art, and it earned her an accolade or two. The event, on the other hand, was a nominee for the 2013 Sundance Film Festival, and while it didn't snag itself a win, being recognized by a film festival of such prestige is nothing to sneeze at. Now how does this background play into the conception of Summer Camp Island? Quite significantly, the series follows a young elephant boy named Oscar and his lifelong hedgehog friend simply named Hedgehog. Yeah, I know, it's as shallow as naming a girl character girl, but that's not really the point. As they spend the next summer on the titular Summer Camp Island, Oscar is a little hesitant at first, but comes around eventually. Together, they embark on adventures across the island on a daily basis, sometimes with the other campers, the counselors who govern them, and the island denizens. From that abstract alone, you can identify the connections between the show and those two short films. The fantastical concepts of the show are lifted from those films, though minus the gory and confrontational imagery and themes. Yup, Belly and the event weren't made with children in mind. But given Julia Pott's tenure on Adventure Time, these concepts are arguably lifted from that show as well, if only partially. And the characters are also lifted from the films. At least, Oscar is. Hedgehog is more of a spiritual successor. The trimming or flat-out removal of the adult-oriented material is not a huge loss because Summer Camp Island is still a fairly good show. There's a cozy atmosphere to it that just puts your mind at ease, and everything in the show lends to that atmosphere. The adventures that the characters embark on are varied and never feel the same. Sometimes, you can't even tell that the events are contained within the island itself, and occasionally, there are adventures that don't take place on the island itself. Such variety can bring a show to life, and the polish of the art aids the show in that respect. Speaking of the art, it is radically different from the grittier, pencil-stroke-heavy styles of Belly and the Event. It's also often compared to that of Adventure Time, which is natural at this point, especially if the showrunner used to work on that show, like Julia and Rebecca. Like Adventure Time, the show features a varied palette of colors that ranges in saturation, being either bright and pronounced, or slightly more muted and down-to-earth. And right off the bat, the crew seem to have gotten the lighting and shading down pat. The environments and characters sport thin outlines compared to most other animated series. The proportions of the character designs are also more consistent across every character. Consistent or uniform, depending on how you look at it. Unlike Adventure Time, Steven Universe, and OKKO, OK the show appears to be adhering to a model sheet, with none of the characters going off model. The uniformity of the art can make the show boring to some audiences, especially especially those coming from other CN series, but to others like me, it makes the show look clean and easy on the eyes. And no, I am not going into a lengthy dissertation about the Cal art style because, quite frankly, I'm getting annoyed by the bitching that people make about it. As for the characters, Oscar and Hedgehog are so damn cute together. Julia Pott may have stated herself that their relationship is strictly platonic, but that sure as hell ain't stopping the shippers, and it's not stopping the show itself. Here. Take a look at these gems. Oscar thinks that you're the coolest person on the planet. It's okay. 
I think you're the coolest, too. I'll help you clean your room, Oscar. Oh, thank gosh, you're my best friend. I can search for a thousand years and never find another person like you. Same team as Hedgehog? We'll be an unstoppable force. The finest athletes in camp. And the finest friend. You can't tell me that this isn't the start of something bigger for these two. Whatever direction this relationship will go, if it stays platonic or slowly becomes romantic, Oscar and Hedgehog are endearing together and a big selling point to the show. Come to think of it, much like Craig of the Creek before it, Summer Camp Island harks back to innocent childhood memories of yore. While they differ in tone, setting, themes, and execution, the essence of it all remains the same. If these two shows are any indication, this could be another recurring trend with a new generation of CN shows. Now, I should inform you that the show was at first not met with unanimous fanfare, or rather, the pilot didn't. If anything, people hated the pilot because of empirical slip-ups. It had a love triangle, it was unintentionally creepy in parts, and the animation… actually, the animation isn't too different. My point stands though, the pilot's lack of polish and by-the-numbers approach did not win people over, though Julia did manage to change everyone's tune. Good job, Julia. As you can tell, if you're coming into Summer Camp Island expecting a grandiose long-term narrative, then this is not the show for you. Not yet, anyway. This is a relaxing, dreamlike series that is designed to put you at ease, with only the occasional mature themes like LGBT relationships interspersed here and there. My only complaint or worry so far is the show downplaying its nooks and crannies or straight up dismissing them. The fantasy setting is breathtaking, but the normalization of small and big instances removes a chunk of the gravitas from the show. I get that we have to suspend our disbelief as an audience, and it is a bit of a stretch to expect the show of this nature to take itself way too seriously, but the characters and setting are endearing. We invest ourselves in them. We want to invest ourselves in them. And it's a little hard to do that when the main characters casually greet sentient pieces of confectionery as if they were just another person. Which is jarring in Oscar's case, given that he's far outside his element. And when the characters that we've grown attached to are put in clear and present danger, we don't want to be apathetic to their plight. By extension, this criticism applies to other fantasy works too. Just because your characters are acclimated to the universe you created doesn't mean your audience is. It's this informality that sucks you out of the immersion. And the more I think about it, the less I like it. But in the end, these are just my first impressions. And just as with the past shows I've given my initial thoughts on, Summer Camp Island still has much room to grow. What it has right now is enough to engage its audience, and only time will tell if the show will go on to be a future Cartoon Network classic. Summer Camp Island by Julia Pott is a charming animated series whose surreal premise pleases the eye and invites the senses. The characters, their adventures, and their chemistry endear the show unto the viewer and impart feelings of warmth upon them. Some areas of the show leave a lot to be desired, but altogether, the concept is strong and sturdy. And Julia Pott and her ragtag team are pushing the concept as far as they can take it. Early episodes have planted the seeds for a more meaningful series to blossom as time goes on, especially the episodes with not-so-subtle mature themes in them. I had a good enough time with the episodes I saw, and I'm holding out hope that Summer Camp Island, like its modern-day contemporaries, will be worthy of carrying the torch throughout the new generation. If you've seen the show for yourself, let me know what you think of it in the comments section. I'm kinda curious to know, especially given the turnaround and reception that the show has pulled off between the pilot and the premiere. If you haven't seen it yet and surrealism is your cup of tea and or you're coming from past surrealist shows, then I can recommend this to you. And that about does it. Until the next video, I'm the one and only C.E.R. Martin, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now!